What? How can you call Andretti something so insignificant? Well, it's simply down to the game being played around them. As far as I'm concerned, Andretti's bid to join Formula One has transformed them into a pawn in the middle of a game of chess going on between the commercial side of F1 and the governing body of the sport, the FIA. For months, Ben Suliam and Stefano Domenicali have been going against one another on many different types of topics surrounding the sport and its future. And the biggest example is the case of the legitimacy of Andretti's bid to join Formula One. What's going to happen? They've gotten the green light to compete, but F1's still saying no. What are we going to see? Andretti not getting a slice of the prize money or the cameras deliberately ignoring the Andretti cars even if they win? And the driver I cannot mention for legal reasons wins the Grand Prix for the team I cannot mention for legal reasons. I have never seen such opposition for a team entering F1 in all the years that I've watched it. Yes, there may have been opposition for teams that are currently in the sport for any sort of shenanigans they get up to. For example, all the kerfuffle regarding the naming rights of Lotus back in the early 2010s with Tony Fernandez and the company that owned the Lotus brand Proton back in the day. What we're seeing right now is effectively Formula One pulling a Gandalf. You shall not pass because you don't have a car. Well, actually, Stefano, they do. And not only that, but Andretti's bid to join F1 has been further emboldened by the confirmation from Otmar Safnauer that he has been talking with Michael Andretti, becoming their team principal in the not too distant future, providing their entry into Formula One goes by unabated. We might find ourselves with the name BWT Andretti Formula One team. And this wouldn't be the first time that we see a pink Andretti thanks to the likes of Auto Nation. According to Otmar, these talks have been brewing as a hypothetical since before he went to Alpine. Michael Andretti courting Formula One teams as early as 2020 in the wake of the Roni Rona, trying to sniff what was remaining in the devastated carcasses of Formula One teams who were barely able to survive that period. You remember how I referred to Andretti being the pawn in the game of chess between Formula One and the FIA? Do not at one point consider a pawn to be insignificant in the game of chess chess because they can control the center of the board for the longest time and where they're positioned and which ones are taken down and which ones can succeed can easily point out where the game is going to go in the favor of one player or another player. The FIA is pushing for Andretti to fully compete since they passed through all the hoops successfully in whether or not they could compete and sustain themselves competitively. Formula One management are pushing against Andretti competing in support of the current roster of teams and their bosses. But now this is where things get interesting. Andretti's positioning on the chessboard between the FIA and FOM can easily push it in the FIA's favour based on many different factors. In short, Andretti are making Ben Suliam's job a hell of a lot easier and making him look way better than the likes of the money-grubbing Stefano Di Monicale. Now, going back to that article I shared with you a couple of days ago, this piece from The Athletic and Luke Smith, it discusses what Andretti has been up to since getting the green light from the FIA to proceed in getting ready to compete as Andretti Formula Racing LLC. Couple that with Otmar's interview with Motorsport Magazine, and you've got yourself quite a few major building blocks in putting a team together already in place. Now, when there was talk of Andretti making a genuine bid to enter Formula One, many of the teams were saying, oh, well, that's well, well and good, but the FIA hasn't even... We get the FIA introducing the expression of interest and Andretti naturally applies. Okay, well, the teams then said, well, you're probably going to need a lot more financial backing than just yourselves. Privateer teams do not really thrive in Formula One anymore. Oh, oh, look at that. In comes General Motors with Cadillac. And now you get the subsequent information of Cadillac and GM becoming power unit suppliers in Formula One from 2028. F1.com did not mention it at all, whereas they made a big song and dance about Audi becoming a power unit supplier. Telling. Okay, well, you are going to have to maybe pay more in anti-dilution fees. Well, Andretti has not exactly said, no, we can't afford that because they have the backing of General Motors. Yes, I know General Motors can easily fall apart and sometimes they do make bad business decisions and their financial security can go up and down. But right now, they seem to be rolling in it and also reveling in their successes at the Daytona 24 hours. Porsche got that plum, but they were right in there until the very end. What's becoming increasingly obvious is that the teams have got really no legs to stand on. And the only argument that they can make has got something to do with money and dilution. With Christian Horner admitting that none of the teams or Liberty Media are willing to pay for the additional slot, as Liberty are quite happy with having 10 teams right at the moment, thank you very much, and that the teams are well aware that right now, F1 is quite asset rich and the smaller teams could be quite susceptible to the bottom falling out of the market 
if F1's value plummets and they don't have sustainable safety nets. Quite a few of the teams have fought long and hard for many years, sometimes decades, to get a fair share of the F1 prize money and TV money pie from the hands of Bernie Eccleston. There was one guy who was getting the majority of the money that Formula One was producing. And it wasn't until the late 2000s that the teams were able to get away in edgeways in getting an even vaguely decent chunk of the pie, with Bernie Eccleston having to relent. So now, after those times, Liberty Media's acquisition, the sudden popularity in F1, we've done the time, we deserve all of this money, all these young upstarts coming in, they don't deserve to suck all the teat of Liberty Media. I apologise profusely for using that term, but I kind of needed to. It was just that dramatic. But the question is though, would these new teams like Andretti really push F1 into disarray? Well, I don't think so. And it's down to an article that Forbes put out just a week ago concerning who is the biggest sports empire in the world? Oh, would you look at that? It's Liberty Media. Turns out they're the biggest sports empire on the planet with an estimated value of over $18 billion. Granted, these are assets, not straight up cash, but they're clearly demonstrating that Liberty Media isn't hard up or anything like that. If they really needed to, they do have cash on hand. So right now, the way I'm seeing it is that Formula One management is trying to spin the narrative of self-preservation through attrition and money is everything. If any new upstarts really want to come into Formula One, well, ideally, they're gonna have to pay about $60 million for each team that currently races in Formula One. And the old argument of saying that Andretti would not really bring any value to the sport, well, Christian Horner, in that same interview, completely disregarded all of that. Him saying that, oh, the likes of Andretti and Cadillac are brilliant brands. They would be phenomenal additions to the sport. Like Hasses, yeah? And the two names of current teams which are now becoming problematic and certain journalist outlets can't really say their full name due to standards and practices, with the likes of Andrew Benson, the chief editor of the BBC Sports section, having to refer to them as RB and Salba instead of VCarb and Filet Mignon. Clearly these teams did not think things through regarding to what journalists can and can't say. They can't be promoting certain products and services. What would make the FIA very pleased, as it's become quite clear that Ben Suliam is very interested in how F1 operates, despite promising to take a back seat in the wake of the comments that he made last year about F1 being overinflated in terms of a value concerning the idea of a Saudi takeover, you know, even thinking $20 billion was too much, even though Liberty Media is worth 18s, so actually that value kind of checked out. Is that Andretti, their charges, aren't going to be taking this silence lying down and will very much do everything necessary to get on the grid whenever F1 decides the time is right, regardless of whatever the anti-dilution fee will be. The FIA have let their pawn, which is Andretti, loose on the chessboard, and they are clearly making really, really clever moves, making diagonal attacks to take down the defences of the Formula One management group, and now they're heading close to taking down the very major kingpins and maybe one day get into the other side of the board and then promoting themselves into even bigger players in the game of Formula One chess. They are there to decimate the very obvious stonewall that Stefano, Liberty and the teams have erected. They are not just going to wait there and hope that F1 will respond back to them, just twiddling their thumbs, waiting for a response and then suddenly go, oh yeah, yeah, come on in. Oh dear. Have you got a team? Have you got a rolling chassis? Uh, power unit? Oh dear. Um, oh yeah, well, we would say that you get things ready, but yeah, you got to do the anti-dilution fee first, mate. Ooh, you're not going to have much money to build a car. Oh dear, looks like you're at the back. Oh, well, maybe you should have bought into an existing team, Michael. That's ideally what Formula One would have wanted, Andretti being a laughing stock, or just giving up through all of the silence that was going on. But nope, none of that has happened. Remember, my friend, even the stoniest of stone walls can one day erode and fall over. It's not like Andretti is waiting for that wall to erode. They are throwing everything they can at that stone wall and hopefully one day they will break through. He is slamming at the edifice with not only the support of an existing huge American automaker, but also existing personnel within the wall of Formula One. And again, the court of public opinion is on their side. In all of my discourse regarding Andretti and their place in F1, I've really not seen a sizable opposition toward them being in the sport. It's all been why aren't they in there already? They should be in the sport. I would watch Formula One if they were in it. It's all just gravy for the likes of Michael Andretti. 
And when you hear from people like Christian Horner that they are aware that Andretti are a legitimate brand and they could be really useful to Formula One in terms of the general spectacle and the overall enjoyment for the fans, but commercially, oh, that's the problem. Well, at least it's their problem. But the actions of the last few days have been really telling that this is just yet the next stage of Andretti's campaign to get into Formula One. That Forbes article comes out announcing what Liberty Media's asset value is. A few days later, the Athletics piece on what Andretti's been doing to get themselves ready for Formula One comes out. Then the next day for Motorsport Magazine, Otmar Safnauer is dangled in front of us all, ready for the March edition of that magazine, telling all about the times he's had in Formula One, all the antics he's had at Alpine, and how Michael Andretti has been courting him over the years to possibly come and work for him. And then of course you have the news of the near win that Cadillac had at the Daytona 24 hours. When you boil down those two articles from The Athletic and Motorsport magazine, Andretti have clearly done their homework and have figured out what they need to do to get a decent foothold in Formula One whilst also embracing the culture and understanding they can't just wade into Formula One with their own people and expect them to learn on the fly. They need to get themselves ingrained within the world of Formula One and find people who are experienced in it, have done it for years, and then bring them over. They also need to be where the action is, where the majority of F1 staff are based, which is in this case around the Silverstone area or the general Midlands region of the UK. And you can easily see this what's happening with VCARB, the second Red Bull team. They are moving so many of the operations from Italy over to Milton Keynes. And yes, I know Milton Keynes is in Silverstone, but it's only 20 miles away or so. That's close enough. They are in that vague region. That means they don't have to commute to a completely different area of the UK or even another country, uproot themselves. So Andretti have recognized that. They have a satellite operation supposedly in Silverstone. So that means people they hire in from different teams can go, oh, it's just down the road. Neat. I don't have to do anything. I just change where I drive on Monday. And then whatever they don't have in their satellite base at Silverstone, they can use the facilities at Cologne, the Toyota Wind Tunnel. And yes, of course, it's not the most current and sophisticated and state-of-the-art wind tunnel that Formula One has to offer, but it's tried and tested. Toyota used it, McLaren used it for the longest time, so it does have a good track record. Let's not forget the Red Bull wind tunnel has been constantly adapted from an old World War II model. And yes, of course, they're not going to be using this forever. Red Bull are currently building a brand new wind tunnel, which is expected to come online in 2026 for their 2027 campaign. But you don't need the most modern wind tunnel to make waves in Formula One. You just need one that works. And right now for Andretti, the Cologne wind tunnel is a start. All of the moves that Andretti have made have been to the benefit of the FIA. They have proven that Ben Suliam and the FIA board, the expression of interest lot, were right to pick Andretti in the sense that they knew what they were talking about. All the stuff they brought to the table in pitching themselves to be in Formula One have rung true. They have made logical decisions which aren't going against the grain for the sake of being MURICAN. Yes, of course, they may have an indie base, of course, but that might be down to admin. They have understood that they need to bring in people from existing teams, and the teams that they have actually sourced from employees are the top tier teams. you got McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull. These top four teams are having the brain drain happening to them without them even knowing it. Most likely, people have gone from these teams to Andretti for the prospect of more senior positions, bigger pay. And quite frankly, if you have General Motors, there is a lot of cash on hand and a lot of personnel and assistance. And again, I said this before, GM could easily go under, they could easily have troubles because they have done in the past, but right now, they're quids in. And say what you will regarding Otmar's conduct with Piastri's Alpine exit, but when you read his previous interviews as to what he was doing at Alpine when he arrived, he was clearly doing stuff that was at the benefit of the Alpine staff. He did not fire people, he hired people. And when you hire people and not fire people, that automatically makes you very popular with the staff because you are making waves and doing stuff that is positive and just reducing the workload for all. And most importantly, Alpine has a more structured aero department because they didn't really have a solid one when he arrived. It's yet another example. What Otmar Safnauer's biggest strength is, is that if he is allowed room to breathe and fully understand what the team needs, he can produce an outfit that can easily punch above their weight. The Force India days. He was getting consistent podiums. Force India at some points were fourth place in the constructors. Racing Point could have been a gross P3 had they not had that pick Mercedes debacle. He does know how to make an efficient team, but when he doesn't have the room to breathe, there is a lot of micromanagement going on from the higher ups, 
That's when things get complicated, things get stunted, and then he is pushed out. Alpine cut so many people from the operation last year, and then of course Papa Stroll turning Racing Point into Aston Martin, it became his team, not Otmar's team. He was working for Papa Stroll, he could have been limited, and maybe he wasn't as much of a yes man as Papa Stroll wanted, and therefore there was no more room at the inn. So that means he took BWT with him and took him to Alpine, and then we could easily see BWT over at Andretti one day. Andretti have now proven themselves to be very, very smart in terms of their operation, as well as being humble, in that they don't expect to know everything about Formula 1. Get into bed with people who do know what the sport is all about which is why they are hiring from within, from the big teams, and then giving them the opportunity to start on the ground level with a very tried and tested and experienced and famous brand that is Andretti, that has the clout of General Motors, there are a lot of things backing them up. This is not some podunk operation like USF1, or even the likes of, you know, the Lotus Tony Fernandez operation, or HRT, or Virgin, Mauritia. They were plucky little teams, but they didn't have that much investment to back them up. They had to make do with very piecemeal assets, but they did make it work. But this is nothing like them, Andretti, at all. Also, it's clear that Andretti doesn't care about what Formula One management does in trying to oppose them. As far as they're concerned, they have the right to go racing and their backers will continue to grow from different American companies and other opportunities. Their support from the fans of F1 will grow too. And all of this is just changing Formula One management and the teams into everything that they hated, that they loathed, that they despised for decades. They are becoming Bernie Eccleston. It's all about themselves and money. They've become everything they ever hated. All the while, Ben Suliam and the FIA just sit back and laugh. But wait, Law, why do we need another American team? We have one at home with Haas. Well, to find out more about why I don't think that's a viable option and why their days are numbered, you might want to watch this video next. It does not make for settling viewing.